All right, welcome to unit five, last big unit of the course, hypothesis testing. The culmination of all our hard work so far this semester will be the study of hypothesis testing. In this experience, we'll examine each part of the process, both conceptually and as a set of calculations. Thorough understanding of these mechanics will ensure you do not make the common mistakes that plague the uninformed. This important procedure is the industry standard technique for scientifically supporting and refuting claims about population means and proportions. Uh, it can also be applied to population standard deviations or other parameters. You will find that something similar to these tests is used to determine if drugs are safe, if new methods are better, or if people's opinions have changed. So, as usual, you want to start by reviewing the previous unit, um, you know, when you get into those critical thinking and project aspects of the previous unit, you might forget some of the basics, so start with that review. Uh, we've got uh, four quick confidence interval problems there to get you started. Um, as the purpose statement made clear, we are looking at hypothesis tests. Um, there's a whole thing with whether it's left-tailed, two-tailed, or right-tailed. Uh, there is a hypothesis test for the mean and for the proportion. Um, the finished conclusion from a hypothesis test, or has to do with the decision we make, which whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, there's two errors to talk about, type 1 and type 2 errors. There's a p-value thing to talk about, right? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and then, of course, there's connection with confidence intervals. Um, and we're going to do it for one and two samples. That's right. They added in a two sample testing to this new version of the class. that wasn't in Math 157. Um, and so we have some problems and a separate spreadsheet and video for that. All right, so a lot of vocabulary notation and formulas here. Um, you've got your hypotheses. Capital H, little zero is the null. Capital H, little a is the alternative. You might see a one there sometimes instead of an a, um, or even an alpha. So uh, Greek letter alpha, those are always the alternative. Uh, and there's some examples of pairs. So you can either have population mean or proportion in that hypothesis, um, and then some other number that you're comparing it to. Uh, that whole thing with left-tailed, right-tailed, two-tailed, you can actually determine that just by looking at the inequality sign in the alternative. So that's nice. Um, one of the connections with the confidence intervals is we had that level of confidence C, like I was 95% confident in my confidence interval. Uh, we now look at the unconfidence, or the complement of that, subtract that from one, 95% uh, confidence interval goes with alpha, Greek letter alpha, um, level of significance of 0 0.05, so 5%. All right, so we're working with alpha instead of C for these problems. Now what about the p-value? So the p-value is the probability that you get the sample data that you did and that the null hypothesis is true. So if the p-value is very, very small, then it's very unlikely that you got both of those things. So we have trust in our sample data, right, since you would before you proceeded, um, then the null might be false, right? So a small p-value goes along with supporting the idea that the null is very unlikely and should be rejected. Um, how small? Well, lower than the level of significance. Uh, so you make that cut off 5% or 1% or 0.1% or whatever you want. Now, p-value could be on the right or the left, or it could be on both sides, depending on your hypothesis. And so we get into the idea of a left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed test. So what about these errors? Well, you, these things aren't foolproof, so you're rejecting the null or you're not rejecting it. Um, it could actually still be true or false no matter what. Uh, remember, we're only pretty sure about these things, just like with confidence intervals. So you end up having these two errors. Um, and so we'll explore some of those a little bit later, but this table kind of helps you identify with uh, what those errors are. All right, uh, so we have our reading. Let me click here to get the web version of the reading that's sort of interactive, right, and lets you kind of do direct links to things and get more information and have problems that can check right in there. Uh, you can also download the PDF. Uh, we want chapters 9 and 10 for, for this section, uh, though with chapter 10 you can kind of focus on 10.1 and 10.3. All right, uh, so we've got two videos from the authors of the textbook uh, going through. Remember they're going to show a lot of calculator stuff, 
to worry so much about that. Um, think about the overall process. Uh, hypotheses obviously have a lot of crazy symbols in them, so we show how to write those out in the website OM here and in Word, Microsoft Word, uh, how to calculate p-values, and how to do three of the important tests that when you have one sample here. Um, the whole idea of making decisions and conclusions is summarized in this document. It's kind of nice. Um, give two specific examples um, and show how the decision is made and how the conclusion can be written in terms of that. Right, the conclusion really has to go back to the claim, uh, which is either the null or the alternative. And because it can vary, you have quite a uh, bit of confusion about that sometimes. So always make sure that your conclusion goes back to the claim and uh, whichever hypothesis that may be. Uh, what about drawing a p-value? We saw that p-values are nice to be visualized from the normal curve um, uh, or the t-distribution, whatever that represents. And so um, here's a nice drawing of how I can think of where that p-value is based on the hypotheses and what the sample data tells you. So uh, essentially we're drawing the sampling distribution, right? And that number that appears in the hypotheses, that's the mean of the sampling distribution. Um, the inequality sign tells you whether to have a right-tailed or left-tailed test, so it tells you where the tail goes. Um, and then the line is drawn wherever that test, uh, sorry, where that point estimate is, wherever that sample statistic is, so a sample mean or a sample proportion. Um, and then you have symmetry with the two-tailed test. Of course, the area here is the p-value, right? So uh, the area of that tail is the p-value. Alright, so you can actually get a little more fancy with those graphs. Uh, whether you use the normal or t-distribution, go to these sites and create those graphs, and we show that in the videos. Um, the videos up here also show me using Excel, uh, and so here's the spreadsheet that has um, the three videos up there. The z-test, t-test, proportion test are on that one sample spreadsheet. The second spreadsheet for two samples is only linked to the videos for the last two practice problems. All right, usual there's a Q&A forum for this unit, so post any questions or uh, post them through the practice problems. Practice is, uh, got 15 questions. I got one withdrawn here um, that won't show up in future iterations of the course, um, but you can ignore that one for now. So really 14 problems, again with question 13 and 15, uh, these will use the two sample spreadsheet and uh, we'll have videos linked on them in just a minute. All right, um, and with the rest of these, uh, there might be something simple, so there's no video there, or it might be a full on hypothesis test, in which case there is a video to walk you through it. Uh, which brings us to the critical thinking. All right, we have seven questions here because there's a lot going on with this stuff. Um, as usual, remember the length requirements. Uh, remember to write in complete sentences and remember to use correct uh, notation um, and things like that. So you remember you need to get some kind of special symbol. Um, you can use the equation editor to do that. Um, all right, and then last but not least, the final part of our semester long project, we're actually going to do a hypothesis test. Uh, with a claim that you come up with and compare that sample data with it uh, and then see whether you're right or not based on that sample data. So, um, you know, as usual, you want to go through the practice and then the critical thinking and then the project in that order. All right, I guess that about does it for Unit 5. Uh, we'll see you in Unit 6.